Okay. Uh, thank you, dear chairman, for your introduction, and thank you very much for your kind invitation to this meeting. Uh, the topic is to discuss about endovascular treatment of CLI. Uh, when we talk about CLI, we talk about multilevel multivessel arterial disease with most of the patient, 50% of them with FEMPOP involvement, but most of the patient uh, with TBL and foot arteries lesion. In fact, 95% present long occlusion of the TBL arteries. Um, what we try to do in these patients is to increase the diet blood flow for the foot and for the users in many of the cases following the endosome concept. So what we know is that depending on the lesion location, we must to increase the flow for the anterior tibial or for posterior tibial. How we approach this type of occlusion and lesions, we have a step-by-step -step crossing strategy. We always try to start with an antegrade access and we start trying to cross the lesion in the luminally. If it fails, we shift for a subintimal approach. And finally, we have the last option that is the retrograde approach that means uh, some transcollateral or plantar loop technique, or in some cases, the retrograde access. <clears throat> the most important thing is that 50% of our procedure is crossing. If we fail to cross, we fail to treat the patient. Let me to introduce the topic with the case. This is a male, 83 years old, with diabetes hypertension, CLI, as you can see with the first, first toe uh, gangrene, that presented with this type of enzo. Anterograde access in the common femoral, some lesions in the P1, P2 segment, subocclusive, and multiple uh, stenosis in the proximal AT, an occlusion of the AT, and distal occlusion of PT. So we don't have direct blood flow for this food, and what we don't have is a main vessels because we have a tarsal artery. However, the first toe received flow from the median plantar artery, so this is our target with the four French catheter and an O18 that wire approach posterior tibial, trying to stay in the lumen. When it was difficult, I shift for an O14. And, well, the guide wire crossed in some way. I was convinced it, it was in the lumen, but unfortunately, it was subintimally. And when I tried to re enter in the median plantar, what happened was that I finished out, out of the artery, in the tissue, as you can see in the super selective control. So rather than to consider it a failure, I leave the guide wire in place and approach anterior tibial in different way. That time I went subintimally, suddenly, that allowed me to guarantee the good crossing and the re entering the distal lumen. I checked through this balloon and I saw that there was the guide wire, the balloon was in the lumen. And I saw that through this lateral tarsal artery, following the deep arch, there was a connection, a direct connection with the um, deep arch. So what I did was a transcollateral, an extreme transcollateral, uh, crossing the tarsal artery and arriving in the median plantar. And finally, I did a retrograde recanalization of the common plantar artery, subintimal uh, recanalization of the distal posterior tibial. With a small balloon, I was able to cross from anterior to posterior, predilate everything, and connect the antegrade get wire with the retrograde one and finally engage the medium plantar antigradly. Final dilatation of PT and AT and DCB in the popliteal artery, and this was the result, with good flow in the SFA and pop without stent, and direct blood flow for anterior and posterior, and from anterior and posterior, direct blood flow at the ankle level, and direct blood flow for the medium plantar artery and for the tarsal branches. And finally, in the anteroposterior view, we, uh, we can see the direct blood flow for the first toe. So even if it was a very complex case, uh, I finally achieved a result. The patient did the first toe amputation, and after two years follow-up, he maintained a healing amputated area. Different situation in different patients. Uh, a patient with already amputated, transmetatarsal amputation that is unable to heal, already treated by uh, open surgery that did um, thrombonarthrectomy of the common femoral plus profundoplasty, and already treated in the proximal SFA. It's difficult to see, but there is a stent, occluded stent in the proximal SFA. This was the situation again, six French antigrade sheath, uh, occlusion, long occlusion of the SFA, with uh, multiple calcifications, stenosis in P2, but relatively good runoff. So posterior tibial and peroneal artery and good flow for the foot. 
So the main focus here was the SFA. Again, anti-gravity four frames catheter unable to cross with a terumo stiff. So cross the stand using the back tip of the terumo and finally continues with the proper tip in the subintimal way. It was a clearly subintimally and quite aggressive recanalization of this SFA that finally allowed me to reach the distal lumen. I re-enter suddenly, the only good thing was that. And I start to prepare the vessel for the final treatment. I did the balloon angioplasty at five millimeter, six millimeter, having still a lot of recoiling, I decided to shift for a short balloon that allowed me to open the artery, but unfortunately, it created some perforations. So I repeat 10 minutes of angioplasty. When I finished, there was no bleeding, and at this point, I decided to fix everything with two supera stent. 5.5 200 millimeter supera stent plus 5.5 150. Uh, the stent deployment was very easy and very fast because it is related more than anything else to the vessel prep. So the vessel prep was aggressive but allowed me to obtain a good lumen. So I was able to deploy the supera stent without any problem and very fast. Uh, when I finished the first stand, I deployed the second one and was able, even if I was working in an integrated fashion, I was able to cover also all the previous uh, implanted and occluded stand in the way to guarantee the better performance of the superior stand, uh, having a full metal jacket in this SFA and the proximal P1 segment. After this stand implantation, <clears throat> I did a check that allowed me to see that there was a good flow in the SFA, uh, even if remain at the distal SFA some ectatic, ectatic uh, segment uh, in the places in which I had previously uh, the, the, the vessel rupture. Uh, you can see the images now, uh, some, something that mm, seems a pseudonymism, but no any compromisation of the flow. So at that point, I decided to stop there. Um, this was clearly the result in terms of stand deployment and flow in the SFA. This is the Doppler ultrasound at one year and a half, uh, still with perfect flow in the SFA and pop. And this is the patient at one year and a half. The patient was uh, in the clinic. Uh, walking with the orthopedic shoes completely healed. The retrograde access is another option. I like to divide the retrograde access um, related to the segment we need to treat. For the SFA and POP, I prefer the higher retrograde access. For the tibial arteries, usually we use the foot arteries access. And for the foot arteries, what we use is the very distal and extreme access. This is a case of retrograde access. The patient arrived at the clinic in that way. Uh, and the surgeon, the foot surgeon, performed uh, a drainage of this disinfection and was in the table the day after. Fem pop axis healthy, but occlusion of anterior and posterior, and also occlusion of dorsalis pedis. And a very high risk of major amputation. What we need to do is the best for the patient. So, what I tried to do was to recanalize everything. I did a subintimal recanalization of posterior tibial that never re enter in the lateral plantar artery. And as you could could see now, there was, I, I was so close to the um, plantar bifurcation, so rather than to take a risk to damage it, I preferred to shift for a distal retrograde axis in the common plantar that suddenly allowed me to connect the anterograde and the retrograde axis and uh, the retrograde guide wire entering in the anterograde catheter. It allowed me to go down with the catheter and reach the distal pattern lumen in the plantar artery and pass a second guide wire in the lateral plantar. I put another guide wire in the medium plantar artery to protect this plantar bifurcation, did a mostasis, and finally, <clears throat> with a long balloon, I did a final dilatation of posterior tibia. Uh, following that, uh, what I did was a pedal plantar loop technique to retrograde the recanalization of dorsalis pedis and to open and create a distal re-enter lumen in the anterior tibial. And with a new V18 guide wire, again in the subintimal fashion, I recanalize suddenly and very easily the anterior tibial without any problem to gain the re-enter at the dorsal circulation. At this point, just check that I, I was in the lumen. After that, another 014 guide wire in the dorsalis pedis and final dilatation of dorsalis pedis and AT. And this was the result 
like uh, you can see, as you can see, with direct blood flow in anterior and posterior, and having direct blood flow through the anterior and through the posterior for the dorsal and for the plantar circulation. It was, from the clinical perspective, a very challenging case because it was a Charcot foot. So the patient did a skin graft, internal and external fixation. At two months, the skin graft was okay. At seven months, the patient was completely healed. But we could have more complex situation. This is a female, 82 years old, with multiple comorbidities and previous treatment in a crossover. Uh, some colleagues opened the SFA and obtained a rupture of the SFA and put a cover stent. That's okay for me, but the problem was that there was a big hematoma and I was unable to find any access. So the only thing I was able to do was a Doppler ultrasound and to check the distality. This was the clinical condition. The patient was scheduled for a transmetatarsal amputation. The only thing I found was the posterior tibial. So what I did was an anti-grade access in the posterior tibial, put a V18 at wire and microsheath, and through this microsheath I did a check, and in fact I was able to see that there were no any main vessels of the foot patent because the biggest one was medium plantar but was occluded. So working through this anti-grade access in the posterior tibial, I was able with an O14 at wire and a super catheter mixing between endo and subintimal, I was able to cross the lateral plantar artery and reach the arch, what was supposed to be the arch, because when I checked, I saw a very thin disease arch, but however, I was able with this O14 guide wire to cross the arch and engage the dorsalis pedis and do a retrograde recanalization of the dorsalis pedis. This is a command guide wire that is very soft tip and allow us to navigate very well. Uh, I pushed the super catheter that was unable to cross the arch, so at this point I removed the microsheath and pass a balloon, two millimeter balloon that allowed me to predilate the arch, predilate the dorsalis pedis, and finally predilate and dilate the lateral plantar artery. As you can see, the balloon crossed uh, very well. And I did the first check. At that point, I realized that there was a good flow through the posterior tibial into the lateral plantar, but still compromisation of the flow in the dorsal circulation related to some distal stenosis in the AT and to a bad flow from uh, AT. So I cross in a retrograde fashion all the AT. I identify an occlusion in the ostium of the AT that after some attempts I was able to cross and finally dilate with the 2.5 millimeter balloon. After this, I dilate all the AT and did the control, the final control that uh, allowed me to understand that I was finally able to achieve a complete below the ankle, below the knee and below the ankle revascularization. Well, the patient did a transmetatarsal amputation and was completely healed after three months. The last option for the patient without option, uh, the deep vein arterialization. This is a case that I did in Mexico three years ago in which I failed to do any type of arterialization of artery revascularization, so I was able to connect posterior tibia with plantar vein, posterior tibial artery connected to plantar vein, dilate everything and obtain a flow. The patient that presented with the gangrene in the fourth toe uh, received an amputation and healed after six months. So the healing time is longer, but at least we can achieve a result. This is uh, the last statistic we did, about 300 patients in three months. Uh, as you can see, our patients arriving with multivessel multilevel arterial disease, but in 96% of the cases, we are able to solve and fix the FEMPOP disease, and in 94% of the cases, we are able to solve and fix the tibial artery disease and it's translated in a very good clinical result because unmaintained, because at six months we have 79% of the patient in very low Wi-Fi rate. Uh, for this, the amputation is it's translated in a very low rate of major amputation, only 3.4%, but to maintain this, we need in 20% of the patients to repeat the treatment in the first six months. In conclusion, the role of the endovascular intervention in CLI is to improve the blood flow for the food and for the users. Below the ankle, endovascular treatment appears to be safe and efficient. 
Superas tend for sure support the FEMPOP treatment, improving the dependency rate and avoiding stent fractures. Thank you so much for your attention.